Guys, I'm ready to go into the Word of God. Are you, are you ready? Yeah? And you know what? For, I'm kind of jealous that I didn't get to worship. Do you mind if I worship with you for just a couple of minutes? So for those of you who are able, would you please just stand to your feet as we prepare our hearts for God's Word? Is that okay with you guys? Hey, but I'm going to ask if you can bring up the piano because I'm, I'm getting to that age where I need hearing, uh, what's it called? Hearing aids. But, guys, can we just get into the praise of God before we get into the word? Oh, we praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. You've been good to us. King Jesus, we come before your presence, God. And we declare that your presence be manifested all over this house. We declare that it be your words coming out of my mouth and not my own, Lord. We declare that there be chains broken, strongholds broken. I declare that there be a spirit of unity in this house. I declare that the Holy Spirit just just comes and invades and erases everything that needs to be erased right now. Because you're so good to us. <laughs> and every day you are. And God, I declare, I declare healing of the heart right now. I declare a healing of any void, of any emptiness that is in anybody's heart right now. Let it be filled this instance. Anybody that's going through a moment of a, of a lost loved one, God, I declare that you just swoop in there and fill that void. God, I declare for anybody that's praying right now for, for a child, those that are going through infertility, I don't know why I'm saying this, those that are going through infertility right now, I declare a seed be planted into their belly right now. This is not... I'm, God, I have faith that this can happen right now, Lord. Just like the angel of the Lord told Abraham, is there anything too hard for the Lord? And he didn't say that as a question. He said it as a statement of fact. King Jesus, we believe that there's nothing impossible for you, Lord. (laughs) There's nothing impossible for you. So I lift up my voice, I lift up my hands, God, and I lift up everything I have and I just surrender it to you, God, right now. (laughs) Oh, Jesus, because this is how I fight my battles, not by my strength, but with you with me, God. And today, I just say yes and amen to you, Father. For those that are here that just came because there was nothing on the calendar on the Wednesday, I declare that you walk out of here a complete different person. For those of you that just came in here because you were bored or there was nothing else to do, this moment right now, receive the Holy Spirit in your life complete transformation in your life (laughs) yes God cause this is how I fight my battles (laughs) cause this is how I fight my battles Cause this is how I fight my battles Cause this is how I fight my battles Mm. Oh, this is how I fight my battles Cause this is how I fight my battles This is how I fight I do that on my knees with my hands stretched out, God. 
So thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your confirmation. There's somebody in here right now, receive this word. Somebody in here right now came in here saying, God, I need a sign here today because I'm about to give, I'm about to take my life. This is the Lord telling you, I have hurt you and I am here for you. Dude, you are not alone. You're not alone. The Lord is speaking to you right now. Don't you dare do that. You have been called, you have been chosen, you have been heard. Now you hear the Lord and you run towards the Lord. Because this is how I fight my battles. Come on, we're almost done. I just want you to lift up your voice and say that. Because this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Huh. Cause this is how I fight my battles. And all this, Father, we pray in your holy name. Amen, Father. God. Man, how many of y'all can feel the praise of God already in this place? Amen. Man, I want to appreciate you. Thank you, Justin, for following me, man. He, he honestly didn't even know what I was going to do, and he followed me awesome. How many of y'all can put your hands together for this man right here? Yes. Yes, guys. I am so excited, and I cannot believe that they gave me another opportunity to be up here in front of you guys. Wow. So, man, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Troy and Ms. Liana, for trusting me one more time, even though I'm wearing my Hawaiian shirt here today. Everybody, as I walked in here, that, that's what you're wearing to preach today? Yes. This is who I am. I'm going to preach in my Hawaiian shirt. Amen. And for those of you that, is there anybody here visiting us for the very first time? Guys, we welcome you. Welcome to Open Door Church. Yes. I don't want to put you in the spot, but we love you guys. This is, I, I'm, not, I'm not the pastor of this church. My name is Pastor AJ. Uh, I'm one of the executive pastors here, and I'm excited to bring what the Lord has placed in my life. And, and guys, what I like to do here today is that I want to talk to those of you who know that you have been created by God to do something significant. All right? We're going to jump in here right away. And I already see a couple of you, like, with your eyes like, God didn't call me to do nothing. And by the way, my name is not Pastor Jerry Sellers. It's AJ, okay? Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> last, last uh, two weeks ago when I preached, I kept saying, uh, my name is Pastor Jerry Sellers. And people actually went up to pastor and said, man, great message. I'm like, obviously you did not hear that word. But, yeah, guys, I want to speak, speak to those of you that God has created to do something significant, something that is meaningful, something that is eternal, and something that actually matters. Because there's a difference. You can do a ton of stuff, but it doesn't matter. And today we're going to talk about if God has called you to do something significant, am I really called to do it? Many of you, you may sense that it's something big, something unique, something special. Raise your hands if that's you. But you don't know exactly what it is and you're not sure where to start. Oh. And I want to share with you a verse that I pray will land in your spirit. I pray that it will build up your faith as you continue this journey in what we call life. Amen. So I want you, if you have your Bibles, I want you to open it to the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1. It's also going to be in the screens for all you sinners that don't bring your Bibles. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I want you guys to know, before we read this, I want you guys to know that you are uniquely created by God. You're not robots. You, you're not, you were not made in an assembly line. You were uniquely created by God for his glory. You were called to make a difference in this world, not just your surroundings, not just, not just your wives or your husbands or your kids, but the world. 
And this is what the book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 says. And, and the apostle Paul wrote this while he was serving time in a Roman prison. He says, therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, I beg you. I beg you. Do you guys feel that emotion when he wrote that? I beg you. I plead with you to lead a life worthy of your calling. I plead with you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by... Only a couple of you guys are awake here. For you... This is mainly for the people watching online. I'm kidding, y'all. To lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. He says, I plead with you to live a life, one that is worthy and dignified of his calling. I want you to look to your neighbor, and again, I'm that, I'm that touch your neighbor preacher. Touch your neighbor, tell him, I've been called by God. And if you're watching online, I want you to comment there below because we have somebody there that's reading the comments and they're going to engage with you. I want you to type down, I've been called by God. And if for a moment this resonates in your spirit because you sense that you were created for a reason, a calling, a purpose, uh, a, a divine destiny. Because you know that no matter what you achieve in this world, no matter what you obtain... In this world, you long for more than just success. Do you know what I'm talking about? There is always something more. There's something in you that craves spiritual and lasting significance. Not just a momentum, not just in a little time, but for the long haul. So I've, I've titled this message today, Is God Calling Me? Is God Calling Me? And you know what? I'm going to answer it right away. The answer is yes. <laughs> All right, guys. God bless you guys. You're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. No. Man, I'm telling you, God has called, has called you. And it, some of you still ask that self, am I called? Yes, you're called. So today we're going to talk about that word, the word called, calling. And I'm not going to talk about what... What in particular he's calling you to. I'm not telling you you're going to be Insta famous or Facebook famous or maybe even TikTok famous. But I'm going to talk about what it means to actually be called. And calling, if you look up the word calling, it, it stems from a, a Greek word. This is the root of a Greek word. And, and it has 16 meanings of this word. 16 mean, meanings in this word. The first one is kaleo. Somebody say kaleo. It means to call. It also means kledo. Somebody say kledos. It means called. Now somebody say klesis. This means calling. And now check out what this means. Ecclesia. Ecclesia means assembly of believers, the church, the called out ones. If you dissect this word even more, it has two words in it. It means it has ek. Ek means, means out of. Klesia means comes from. That means that we are, called, we are called the out ones. We don't go into a building. We are called to go outside of the building and be and change and transform the world. Today I'm not going to go preacher mode. I'm just going to teach. Is that cool? Yes? I, no, I may go preacher mode in a little bit, but it's okay. We, don't, we are not called to go into a building. We're called to go into the world. If you own it, and if you own that, and if you recognize it, that you've been genuinely set apart by God, that you've been chosen by God, and that you've been gifted by God, and called to truly make a difference, that puts a little weight on you, doesn't it? It's, it, it can become heavy. Man. But, and you ask yourself, what if God is calling me and chosen me for something special? What if I miss that call? Have y'all ever, be honest, have y'all ever asked that, yourself that? Have I missed that call? Is God really calling me? Well, today I'm here to tell you that the calling is about who you are before what you do. The calling is about who you are before what you do. Man. God is calling you to a who 
before a do. Oh, some of you ain't getting this. God is calling you for, to a who before you actually do. Second, Second Timothy verse 1, chapter 1 verse 9, it says, For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserved it, but because that was his plan from before the beginning of time. To show us his grace through Christ Jesus. The calling is much more about who you're becoming than what you are doing. Dude. The word of God is telling us you are called. Yes, everybody here is called, but you are called first to be holy. To be set apart. To be different. That means that when you follow Jesus, you don't look like the world. I already saw like three people leave. Thank you guys. Bless them. That means that when you follow Jesus, you don't act like the world. That means that when you follow Jesus, you don't behave like the world. Because you've been set apart by God to live your calling, which is a holy life. Man, when the Bible, every time you talk about, every time you read the Bible, if you read the Bible, when you read the Bible and it mentions the word calling, you never hear, oh, you're being called to this type of career. Oh, you're being called to this type of ministry. Oh, you're being called to this type of position. Every time you hear the word calling, the Bible says it is to become more like Jesus. It is to become more like Jesus not that of the world. It is a who before a do. And then you do do. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to drink some water on that note. Instead of us having the question, we always have this question. Instead of us like, what am I called to do? Ask yourself, who am I called to be? What is my identity in you, Jesus? Then I will discover what I got to do. Little by little, as you become more spiritual, you become into an awareness of who you really are. As you get deeper and deeper into the word of God, you start to discover who you truly are. When you start getting into the things of the world, the more you get into the things of the world, the more you discover that you are far apart from the things of the Lord. The more you know who you are, the less willing you are to be who you were. Man. You want me to say that again? <laughs> The more you know who you are, the less willing to be who you were. When you realize that you are called by God, you realize that not only did he prepare for you. Okay, I want you to look at this. Not only did God prepare for you, but he took his sweet time with you. And some of us, he took longer. <laughs> he stretched us out a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. No, I don't blame Jesus on that. I blame Taco Bell and all that fast food stuff. No, but not only did he pray for you, he took his sweet time with you. And when, when you discover this, you start to realize that you truly are significant. You truly are significant. When you don't realize that you are significant, that's when you have track marks in your arms. Because you didn't know who you were. Rona, get away from here right now. Nobody caught that one. When you don't realize that you are significant, that's why you gave yourself to anybody and everybody because you were fascinated that they liked you because you didn't know that you were significant. God. God. Look at somebody and tell them you're significant. You know what? Is Mason over here? Mason, are you here? Mason? No? Uh, uh, Kirk, come up here, Kirk. Come on up here. 
Everybody give Kirk a round of applause, man. You know what, while he's coming up here, do you know why he's coming out here? Ah, you, you're catching on. But he's coming out here because I called him. Mason that I called did not come here because he did not hear my voice. He came here because he heard my voice. He responded to the call that I had for him. Oh. And listen, he didn't, he, he didn't know that I had planned. I prepared. I had prepared before he even got here to call him. I prepared to use him. Well, actually, I prepared to use Mason, but he even helped a lot in the illustration. Thank you, Mason. I prepared to use him as part of the illustration to show that no matter how far away I was from him, I called his name and he came to me. It was his choice to hear my voice and to respond to that call. Oh. <laughs> and he never would have done anything, he would have still been seated if he hadn't heard my voice and responded to that call. And some of us are still like, God, why am I not used? And God's been calling you for 20 years, but you've never responded to that call. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you. You know why? Because you're significant. God prepared you for this. He prepared you for your destiny. He prepared you for your future. And he prepared you for your promise. And some of you are still saying, man, but I was, I, I, I was just happy. I was just chilling. I was just drunk. <clears throat> I was having a good time. I was even building my own business. I was earning a ton of money. And you know what? Somebody told me this last week. They said, like, man, how come preachers never preach about, like, from from prosperity or from victory instead of to victory, I'm going to speak to that point right now. Even when you're from victory, you don't hear the word of God. Every time, even if you're successful, it doesn't mean that you're successful in the eyes of the Lord. Even if you're building your own business, earning a ton of money, hanging out with my friends, my cousins, all my girls, but then all of a sudden, everything changed because I got called. Everything changes. Everything changes. And now I am significant because I know that I am significant. He has called me to know who I am before what I do. Oh, man, I can end this right now and just say, Jesus. Listen, you don't, have, you don't call anybody. You don't call anybody on your phone if you don't have a plan for you don't pick up your phone and call somebody without a purpose unless you're prank dialing somebody. You don't call somebody and then say, I don't know what I, I, what I wanted with you in the first place. In fact, I wonder, you that are sitting down right here right now at Open Door Church and those that are watching online, I wonder, I honestly wonder who you are that he put so much labor and work into setting the stage for you. Oh, uh, what has God done? Again, I'm going to keep doing this all night. What has God done? What is he doing? The details are in the prep work. The details are in the prep work. The circumstances had to be right. The age, the era, the gender, the community you were born into, it had to be right. None of it just happened. None of it just happened. Look what, the Lord, look what the Lord told Jeremiah. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Y'all didn't catch that. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. I ordained thee. I sanctified thee. And the word sanctified means I set you apart. 
You have been called. That means you have been set apart from the world. Why are you still driving down that line? God, why are you not using me? Get away from that line and join Jesus' side. You don't, I'm telling you right now, the Lord has set you apart. God meant for us to not fit in. Man, God did not meant for us to fit in. The calling isn't about something important you do in the future. It's about your faithfulness to Jesus today. Bruh. Bruh. The calling isn't about something important you do in the future. It's about your faithfulness to Jesus today. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks through him to God the Father. Listen, it's not a race. It's not a race to the biggest seat. The seat don't have to be big, a big thing to be an important thing. Some of you still hadn't caught, haven't caught that. The seat does not have to be a big thing. The, the seat don't have to be a big thing it, in order for it to be an important thing. The big stage and the big things don't make you significant. The Lord does. Okay. And sometimes you're trying to get something big because you're drawing importance from the people instead of God. But the best thing in life is when you think what you do is important, is important. Did I make sense there? Some of you are forsaking your calling. What the Lord has prepared and prepped and done all these things for. Some of you have been forsaking your calling, trying to find something big and impressive so that the people around you can think you are important. And you spend your entire life missing your calling because you're trying to please man instead of Jesus. You have to believe that what you are called to do is relevant and important. Not big and awesome. Because until you do, you won't do the small things with excellence. And if you don't do the small things with excellence, you're not going to get the big things. Man, oh man. And for some of you that are like, I don't understand that. <laughs> Let me give you some Bible language for that. For you religious folks. If you are faithful in the few things, I will make you ruler over many things. Love the skin you're in, the child that you have, the man that you're with, the house that you're living in right now, the apartment that you're living in. That does not make you important. That does not make you more qualified or less qualified. Because the calling doesn't start where you are or currently doing. It is when you know who you are. And that doesn't mean you're surviving. That just means you're self-aware and you're realizing I have a place to start and I know my finish. Man, is this good for y'all? If you feel that your job, listen, if you feel, if you feel that your job is to give direction to God. If you feel that your job, that you were born to give direction to God. For what he is to do, you will be frustrated your entire Christian life. God, I need you to do this right now, Lord. I need you to find me my perfect husband right now. <laughs> God, I need you to find me the best looking woman for, for me as my wife. That's what I need, Lord. Ten years later, Lord, this is your fault. If you feel that your job is to take directions from him, you will be delighted by his goodness all the days of your life. You guys see the difference? You don't give directions to God. God gives you directions. <laughs> Man. If you're frustrated with God, it's probably because you're making demands upon him and he is not cooperating with you. God is not cooperating with you. I'm sorry. Call HR. 
This is what the Lord said. The Lord said clearly, seek first the kingdom and these things will come. Seek first the kingdom and those things will follow. Find out and discover who you are first in me and then I'll tell you what you got to do. Seek the kingdom. Somebody yell, seek the kingdom. Whenever there is an absence of a breakthrough, we need to resurvey the situation and ask, is the kingdom on my mind? Oh. Don't chase the call. Chase the God who calls you. Don't chase the calling. Chase the God that is calling you. Man, oh man. Should I say that one more time? Don't chase the call, but chase the God who has been calling you your entire life. Then the fruit will follow when you start obeying the word of the Lord and set the word of your neighbor and the, the word of your cousins and your sisters and your, and your mothers and your fathers. Man, what does it look like? What does it look like to actually seek the kingdom of the Lord? What is it? It's laid out for us in the Bible. It tells us, the entire book tells us what it is. God makes it clear again and again and again what we're supposed to do. It's to love others, care for the poor, and live our lives in such a way that we point to the power of the gospel and not of us. Hmm. That's the kingdom. Before being called to do something, we are called to someone. I hope you guys are getting this. Before we are called to do a, a, a ministry and, a, and, and I need to do this, I need to do that. Man, I, I got this new appointment and I, I'm, transformation. God is telling you, come to me first and I'll give you. I'll give you the plans and the strategies. Seek me first. Seek the kingdom first. And the bigger things will follow. Before being called to do, we are called to be our primary calling is to be in personal relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. That is our primary calling. So when I say the question, is, is God calling me? Yes. The answer is yes. He's calling you to be in a, re, a true relationship with the Father. Man. The Bible tells us that God has called us into fellowship with his Son. The Bible is telling us that we need, a, we need to have a true relationship with the Father. I don't know if you all remember what I preached about the other day. When we don't have a true relationship with the Father, then all we truly have is religion. Okay. And I said this the other time too. And then what happens when we get stuck in the religion? Religion, the only thing it does is form captivity. Because we become, we, keep, we become complacent in the things of the world. We become complacent coming to church every Wednesday, every Sunday, every time there's an event. That is religion. That is not a relationship with the Father. And today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity, y'all. The Bible tells us to come into fellowship with the Son, Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 through 10 says... But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God. This is what the Lord is saying here. You are chosen. Man, but I don't think I'm that. He's telling you, you're royal priesthood. Man, but I'm never going to do anything. You have been called and chosen. You're God's special possession. I have took my time with you. I prepared for you. Accept the call. Stop running to everybody else and start running to the Father. It's time to truly understand the words of the Lord. To have it's easy to have a relationship with the Father. It's that easy. Somebody say amen in this house. 
You have been called out of darkness into his wonderful light. Jesus came into, the, into hell and said, this is my child because I think he is significant. When the world says all he is is a drunk, all she is is, 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 all he is is a womanizer, all she is is this and that and that, God says she is my child and I'm calling her called. But it's up to the child to accept that calling. When we don't realize, when we don't realize that that's who we are, that's when our self-esteem becomes this. That's when our self-esteem becomes so low. And like I said before, that's when the track marks happen in our arms. That's when we start running into every man's or every woman's arms because we feel a little bit of love when the Father is giving us a full love, an eternal love. This is the season, this is the season that if we do not rise up as a body of Christ, we're going to lose. The world is ready to take everything we have. And when I mean the world, you know what, I'm going to rephrase that. Time out. It's the devil. The devil thinks he can come into anybody and destroy and defeat. But I'm telling you, it will happen if we don't stand up and accept the calling of Jesus. Once you realize that your business, that your kids, that your family is not, is not the things that will lead you to life eternally. When you realize that it's Jesus Christ, your family, your business, and your kids will flourish. When we put Jesus in front of every politics, in front of every war, Jesus will handle everything. And even if, I praise you, Jesus. Amen. This is the moment that we as believers, we have to accept this calling. There is no ifs, there is no buts anymore. The time to squander, the time to waste, the time to, to think that we're having fun is over. What we're seeing right now in Europe is nothing compared to what the Bible is prophesying will happen. And, it, and if right now you feel, you feel fear, if right now you feel this like, oh my God, the world is coming to an end, I challenge you, nobody's making fun, I challenge you to accept the calling and walk with Jesus. Let him give you the strength. Let him give you the courage. What this world is lacking is courage, and the only one that can provide that courage is Jesus Christ. Why do you think that the world is trying to infiltrate our kids and even this generation with a lack of identity? Oh, no, I think you're this. Oh, no, I think you should be this. At three years old, they're trying to determine what gender they should be. Because if you don't know who you are, then you don't know what you're going to do. If you don't know that the Lord has called you... There's a, saying, there's a saying that says, the only way that evil will triumph is, with, is when good men do nothing. The only way that evil will triumph is when good people do nothing. What does that mean? It's when the body of Christ is sitting down and chilling and just parting it up. And saying, oh, I'm just here. I'm, I'm rejoicing because I'm waiting for, for when Jesus comes. Okay. You go ahead and wait right there. God has called us to be significant. To be significant in a way to change the world. That's it. It's easy. What have we done? What have we done? And I, and I look at my life too. I look at my life and I say, what have I done? Have I been, have, have I been a helping hand to somebody? Have I... Have I made the right choices? And I, and I put myself in those situations. I'm like, and I'm telling you guys, I'm not perfect by far means. If I was perfect, I would be a size 32 and all buffed up, six foot five. Yeah, no, that's not me. No, that's not me. But what I do stand with is that, God, I'm believing that you will direct me 
that you will, you're still molding me. And I have to realize that once you tell me who I am, that is who I am. There ain't no second guessing anymore. You know what I'm saying? There is no more second guessing. Is God calling me? Yes. Is there anybody here that accepts that call? I'm going to ask that one more time. Is there anybody in this house that accepts that call? Listen, and we're going to, I want you guys to do me this favor. There's, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of people watching this. Can we pray for those people that are watching right now? That are saying, I, I don't know who I am. God is calling you. I don't know what I got to do. Discover your calling through him first. So, King Jesus, we pray for those that are watching right now online. You that are going through depression right now. <laughs> you that are holding a pistol right now in your hand and you don't know what you got to do. The Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you. Seek first his kingdom. And watch the breakthrough happen all over your life and your wife's life. And I'm saying that to somebody right now that's watching. Watch the breakthrough that will happen to you and your relationship right now. This time next week, you and your family will tear up those paperwork. And you will have a renewed relationship, says the Lord. And God, I pray for all those that are watching right now that are going through situations. And I pray for all those that are going through circumstance. God, I pray for, for all the Ukrainians right now, God. I pray for all the Russians right now, God. All those that are torn in the midst of this chaotic world. And those that are there accepting the call, God, in the middle of that. That you protect them, Lord. That you raise up an army and that every bullet that comes their way shall be stopped by your holy presence. That every time they go to persecute them because they're following you and praising you, I declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in your holy name, Lord. It is done by your holy love and your holy grace, King Jesus. And I'm going to ask everybody in this room to stand up, everybody.